Jacob, my little friend. Let's go. Time. It was the vision of Clive Dunstan that was probably 20 years before that, so maybe 40 years ago, that there would be a football team in the football club in Fernie Grove. Brad White, um, I've, uh, I've been associated with the club since um, since the first meeting. Clive Dunstan was there as the um, at, at that time he was the the boss of the Brisbane Juniors. Clive Dunstan was there, and um, Shane Johnson, who was who went on to become the uh, football manager with the Brisbane Lions for a fair while, he was there, and myself. So we didn't we didn't get a great attendance for the first meeting, but you know, everything has got to start somewhere. So the first meeting I went to the AGM was down at the tennis court on the way to um, Sanford. I didn't know what to expect, and then everyone's down on the creek bed, and the AGM was were held in a dry creek bed. <laughs> And I'm going, what have I got myself in for? We had a sign on day. Uh, you know, that was um, that was a learning experience for all of us, I think. We were sort of flying by the seat of our pants. We got a lot of uh, a lot of interest from uh, Oz kickers. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was good. And that was uh, and those and those Oz kickers that we did sign. Uh, most of those went went through the club. The first year I played was at the Fernie Grove High School. The second year was here, and the third year we had to move out to the state school, Ferny Grove State School. Friday nights we'd all have to pack up goalposts, barbecues, witches hats, footballs, Footy everything, jumpers, everything to have a game of football. Everything was loaded in the car, and including the conjure, and because we had nowhere to store anything, we, we, we literally just dragged it all around. But we were we were literally gypsies. Yeah, we had the tent and then we progressed to a caravan. We had that for a couple of years. We set up underneath one of the buildings there and we'd have hot dogs and chips and lollies and things like that. Somebody would bring a, um, a portable barbecue and we'd boil the, boil the hot dogs on there and yeah, that was our revenue making barbecue. Well, that's right, that's what we were laughing about going through the minutes. I think every um, one of the minutes had something about a sausage sizzle in it. <laughs> we didn't realise we had, had so many sausage sizzles going all the time. But gee. The burning of the barbecue was probably one of the more, more uh, colourful stories. We were always watching the dollars and cents. And we never bought a barbecue until uh, well and truly later in the piece. We used to use one of the members' football uh, um, barbecues. They'd bring it up on Saturdays and we used to do that. But we had there was a lot heaped hundreds of people here that day. It was a really big day and the barbecue was going continuously and Doug was cooking. Well, we had too many mystery bags on the on the barbie at the time and uh, mysteriously uh, uh, we had uh, a bit of a flight. We, we, we really had a barbie and uh, it uh, it actually we needed the fiber we knew it, yeah, it actually burnt the barbecue and all the knobs were melted. All the knobs were melted and that was the, uh, I guess we then were motivated to buy our first barbecue because not only did we have to buy one for the, uh, for the parent that donated the barbecue, but we also had to get our own. Our siren was to find a parent each Saturday and would sit in their car and blow their horn. We had the odd occasion where a parent who uh, forgot their duty for that particular, for a particular game and, um, and off, it, off they went to shopping, uh, not realising that it was the last quarter, and um, they went off shopping. Meanwhile, the kids are continuing to play football. 
parents are coming out, how long is this quarter going to last? It's going on for about half an hour because we didn't realise that our car horn or the siren to, to end the game had, had left and gone shopping. Look, the clubhouse is certainly a, um, a, a great milestone for the club. It was a, it was a lot of hard work to, to, get, to get to that stage. Um, we a lot of hard work from um, people like uh, Jeff Wilson, the local MP. What was unusual about this was that we were able to link the Fernie Fireballs Junior Cricket Club together with the Fernie Falcons uh, Aussie Rules Club, Junior Aussie Rules Club and the Arana Bridge Club. Uh, and uh, in this three-way joint venture, uh, pooling the funds that the Bridge Club had um, uh, with some funds from the cricket and the, and the football club. Uh, that was enough to uh, entitle uh, the clubs to access this uh, state government funding. The, the ground is certainly, you know, you look at the ground now compared to what it used to be is unrecognisable. Uh, you know, this was a dusty uh, paddock um, uh, years ago. Uh, it, it's hard to imagine what it was truly like. The predominant area of grass was from the centre, that side or south. This was pretty much like a beach. So uh, it was rather awkward trying to play footy on a beach. So the things that you see behind me now, the ground, uh, which was a, a, a rubbish dump when, when I first started, it wasn't capped properly. To have it recapped, resurfaced, new fencing, the lights you see behind was all a culmination of a, a lot of hard work from a lot of people.